Uh, so we got some new information. We're doing a tactical roundtable, definitely an emergency tactical roundtable. Um, before I get too crazy into any information, I have to introduce the one and only G Money Mozart. Yo, Welcome, sir. What is going on? What is going on? What's up, everybody? Yeah, somebody sitting rumors. Okay, so this uh, I put out a video. G put out a video earlier talking about the new leaked information. It's not official. It's not coming from the Ghost Recon. It's not coming from the developers. It's coming from the one and only Tom Henderson, which I mean, oh, yeah. insider gaming. Yeah, he's pretty. Uh, he's a pretty reputable source. Um, obviously in the gaming community. Um, and he released some information that we're going to be going over here in today's TAC Roundtable. Interesting to hear what everybody's opinions on this is. Uh, but real quick, before we go any further, Murad comes in with the $11.99 donation. Here's Murad. to two legends that Billy Badass and Johnny on the spot when it comes to Ghost Recon drama and calling out UV with the puke emoji. <laughs> oh, man, it's going to be it's going to be an interesting stream. It's definitely going to be an interesting stream. Um, and then King Mankovic with the 28 months of a tier wow, two wow, supporter. Wow, 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 let's go. I appreciate it, man. Got that gold Hell badge yeah. going on. Oh, so yeah. real quick, I'm, I'm going to plug this too. If you guys want to become a channel member, it is only 99 cents. If you guys just want to help help the creation of more content here on the channel. Um, that, is, that is no by me, any means required or anything, but you get some cool Do emojis it. to put in the chat. You get a little badge icon next to your name in the chat and the comment section of the videos. But without further ado, I don't know if I need to pull this up, pull the article up real quick, and yeah. we can go over it. So basically, let's let's just discuss yeah, the elephant in the room. We want to start there. Yeah. So the elephant in the room, we got some leaked information from Tom Henderson talking about the next Ghost Recon game project over, and the information that he received is basically telling us that Ghost Recon, the next Ghost Recon is no longer going to be a third-person tactical shooter. They are making the transition to first-person, like Call of Duty, like Battlefield, like a number of other games. We already have a bunch of first-person tactical shooters, but trust me, we'll get into that, I'm sure, um, throughout the coming minutes and stuff. But the uh, the original, or I guess the initial shock through the Ghost Recon community, especially on that Twitter post, was polarizing. Um, it was pretty one-sided. There were a few outliers um, people talking about, you know, it'd be cool to go first person because it's more, more realistic. It's more immersive, which that's debatable. Um, but first off, I got to get, uh, the opinion of the man, the myth, the legend. Were you so excited? <laughs> um, look, I think, I think the heartbeat of the community after the wildlands mod and the breakpoint mod of first person was, yo, maybe Ubisoft moving forward will finally give us that rock star treatment where like we could have the best of both worlds. We could move into third, we can move into first. And I know that's what I was hoping for. But you know, it looks like uh according to Insider Gaming, they're gonna go with the first person perspective it doesn't really i don't know if i should say i'm shocked or surprised because when you have call of duty making a billion dollars every year <laughs> yeah. and uh you know you it's all about it's all about money it's all about profits and it's all about being successful and maybe ubisoft felt like the third person model had run its course um you know, I really can't say. I do know that money talks, bullshit walks, and Ghost Recon Breakpoint, according to the industry and ratings and what people thought, it was a lot of bullshit. So maybe they figured a, a nice, fresh restart. Maybe this is something that can get people hyped. Um, you know, I, I posted a, a video myself on the topic, and I mentioned uh, guys like Operator Drewski, very popular YouTubers who primarily uh, play and cover first-person games. And as industry people, if you see th things like that and you might think, you know, maybe we should take our games here, maybe we should take our games there, and you look at these types of channels and successes of games like Call of Duty, uh, even indie games like Ready or Not, 
have gotten very popular. And so, you know, it, it is what it is at this point. If this is going to be what it's going to be, we're going to get a Ghost Recon first person game moving forward. The only positive thing I might see out of this is that a game like Ready or Not was name dropped. And for someone like myself, I've been an advocate for, you know, uh, AI controls and really Ghost Recon getting back to the tactical squad based uh, shooter mechanics. So, you know, they might go first, but then they might give us that. So it's going to be a mixed bag for someone like myself. But for people who don't care about the perspective and are fine with the first person, you no, know, if they go back to the nitty gritty, you know, tactical uh, realism and squad based controls, you never know. They 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 might hit it out the park. I'll just be disappointed that they don't hit it out the park with a third person perspective. So we got to see. Yeah, yeah. I'm definitely curious to see what they do with the direction with going to first person because everybody, everything has kind of been done when it comes to that. Like when it comes to Ready or Not, and then you have Insurgency Sandstorm, you have Escape from Tarkov, you have Call of Duty. A lot of the bases are pretty much covered with it being the third person. It kind of had, we talked about this before on several roundtables, they kind of had the genre to themselves. Yeah. And trying to compete with juggernauts like Call of Duty, like Battlefield, like like you said, they kind of name dropped those, but I know in your video, those games are, like you said, are extremely different from each yeah. other. Yeah. So, I mean, they're going to have to try to do something that no other game has done, which I don't even know what that would be in the first person perspective because there's so many games that have done so many things in first person that I just don't know how they're going to be able to set themselves apart from the other, the other games in that genre. There's so many of them. That was the yeah, one maybe thing they don't have to. That's true. I mean, they are going to be releasing it on console. Like somebody actually said in my comment section earlier, like you have Call of Duty. Call of Duty is not really a tactical shooter. Like there was yeah. some elements of the Call of Duty 2019 campaign that were pretty cool tactical, but it was more, I don't know. I don't know how I want to put it. It was scripted. Like the, the kill house mission where you have to go sweep in the house or whatever and go up the three floors and all that stuff. It was linear, but if like, I don't know. It's not, I don't know. I'm, Call of Duty and Ghost Recon go in that direction. Just they're gonna have to do something extremely tactical that's not been done. Well, I, look, you said you said kind of lost my train of thought there when I started talking about Call of Duty because it kind of upset you're, me. You're so you're so heartbroken right now, but you have to think of it like this, right? It's Ubisoft. It's gonna be on console. It's not like that's where um, I was going the, with it. Yeah, it's yeah. not like the anticipated game is the Gray Zone Warfare that's making rounds on Twitter and and getting some hype or something like Tarkov, these games are going to PC. The PC community has their fill with these types of games. Right. But the console market is big. And there is a, a void there to be filled with what Ubisoft might be able to do that other games aren't doing. You know, Call of right. Duty is, it's, it's an arcade game. And Ready or Not is not on console. So... If Ubisoft can come in and kind of fill that void for people who are looking for a tactical game, it'll be first person. It'll have squad commands. It's, you know, it's like going back to, um, uh, what is it? Uh, uh, Red Thun, uh, Dragon Rising, Operation, what, what, what was the name of that game? Oh, Operation, dude, I don't um, know. Uh, Dragon Rising. What was the name of that game, guys? Uh, so, you know, when you... Talking when, about like Operation Flashpoint? Yeah, yeah, Flashpoint. Okay. You know, they, so they, they can be providing something to basically everyone and it won't just be, oh, yeah, I can only play this here. I can only play this there. So the console people might, you know, they might be looking forward to it. Now, that being said, I, Armor Reforger is going through its its things now. I think they're looking to the future to be able to have their console market really expand with Arma 4 or things like that. So who knows where the industry goes from here as far as tactical games on PC, console, but as far as it, it is for Ubisoft, you know, Ubisoft is is basically going to move into that market and the first person genre. So, you know, we'll see. We'll see. All, all we all we can say right now is first of all, we're gonna see what unfolds. Uh Henderson might only got have a snippet of information on something that's 
at a at a point in development where he doesn't know what's going on. So, you know, we right. got to see what's up. We're getting little details here and there, but the anticipation is there for the community because we're looking at this October, which I know it's only March, but the months go fast. Yo, this October makes what? Five years? Five years. Five October years since Breakpoint. Ninth, I think it is. Uh, October, yeah, I think the third, right? The, was that yeah. early access? I don't, came out I don't, fifth or been, something, yeah. whatever. Early October, yeah, whatever. Five October, years. yeah, five years. So people are like frothing, <laughs> frothing at, at the mouth for for any little thing that they could see what's going on with Ghost Recon because even though Breakpoint didn't do that great according to you know the industry and how much money I'm sure Ubisoft wanted to make off of it. Ghost Recon is still a very popular and supported IP and people want to know, you know, what's going on with the next Ghost Recon game. So this is the information we have and this is where we're going from here. And, you know, I'm sure some people are excited, uh, but uh, there are some people like myself who are a little disappointed because I am a fan of third person gaming. Yeah. Uh, The consensus that I got just based off of my community uh, in the comments section that it's kind of the point is the general Ghost Recon, the core Ghost Recon community is not happy. Not happy whatsoever. There are other people that, you know, they like first-person shooters, they play other first-person shooters, and if they go semi-realistic, which is kind of what Tom Henderson said in his post, but, you know, depending on how far they are in development, I don't see Ghost Recon going milsim like he kind of mentioned in the post maybe somewhere kind of in in between but there's there's people that are going to enjoy that like you said there's it's it could sell well because there is a broad market for that but the core ghost recon audience from what i have seen is not happy is not happy like though it should be third with an option for both like arma does it grand theft auto does it even starfield does it not well i would say but like you can go third you can go first well, they just, it's Starfield. I didn't think it was that great because the third person animations are not that great. Yeah. Because and it's like the really way they render a the, lot of effort into them. Yeah. And the way they render first person, it's not, it's not the same. Like the animation in third person when you're running is different than the animation in first person. So it's sort of rendered yeah, funky. Yeah. 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 But I don't know. I guess what, uh, I think you talked about it in your video. I thought you did maybe, but like the option, if like with modders, Modders can yeah. make a first-person mod for a third-person game. If they could somehow get in there, is there a possibility that they could make a third-person mod for a first-person game? Well, the thing is, is that we we I feel like we've gotten spoiled with Nexus mods. Ooh. Those of us who those of us who are still playing these games, still going back to Wildlands, still going back to Breakpoint, where you know changing out clothes and then the first person mod came and it's cool because you could kind of switch from first to third even though on breakpoint it was broken on wildlands it worked a lot better yeah but you know when you see that and you're playing games like uh grand theft auto or red dead redemption or like you said games like starfield are coming out and more games are starting to implement that and you have triple a studios like ubisoft with anvil next 2.0 which is a very, I don't know what the engine specializes in, but it seems to, to do very well with animations due to Assassin's Creed. It seems very, and, you know, kudos to the developers, whether it's Montreal, Quebec, whoever's making the Assassin's Creed games, but they're using Anvil Next, and the animation teams always usually hit it out of the park. And I thought they yeah. hit it out of the park with Breakpoint. And seeing that, seeing what they did in Breakpoint, moving more towards that that fluid and transitional type of animating where up a rock, down a rock, different types of animation. They did that really well. They did it really well. So I'm thinking to myself, yo, if this is the tech we're getting now, I can't wait for the next game to see the type of talent and how much better they might've gotten and how much better the engine might be to provide, you know, us with amazing animations. And I actually tweeted a, a, a video of someone making it something in Unreal and the animations were absolutely incredible. And I was like, yo, this is why third person gaming for me hits its mark because I'm looking at these animations like, holy shit, this is like next gen level shit. Yeah. And knowing Ubisoft, I'm thinking, yo, they're going to hit a home run with the next game. And for them to take that away, to yeah. go to that, 
for, for me, I say generic, it's not generic, but I say that generic first person perspective, it just, it's a little disappointing, especially when I look at how first person games all operate, especially if you're bringing it to console, it's going to be the same old thing. And to me, that just doesn't excite me, no matter how good the gameplay may be, you know, I'll play it. I'll see if they really hit, They it, you know, the bells and whistles everywhere else are really, uh, are there but still at the end of the day i'm like damn man i really wanted to see where they were going to go with their animations and what their animating team were would have been able to do if it was another third person game so we're not going to get that this time around yeah and uh warwolf has an interesting point in the comments she says hopes next ghost recon game can get better with mod support i'll be honest i feel with what happened with nexus mods and the cool things that we were able to do obviously i didn't make any mods but the yeah. what the modders were able to do they might some be cracking of, down on they, it or try to. Yeah, they might try to crack down on it so that mods... Yeah. Like, if they would just make the damn game, like, have mod support from the start, like, but that's... that's Ubisoft doesn't want you in... They don't want you in there in the code and, and all that other why. stuff. I don't know why. Because, like, if one modder can make a really good functioning first-person mod in Ghost Recon Wildlands, if it was open to full mod support, you can bet that they would be able to make a pretty good third person mod with the tools that they would have available to them. Um, but based off of what I've seen, it seems to be that it's easier to make a first person mod in a third person game. Yeah. Then it would be to make a third person mod in a first person game. Escape from Tarkov is a good example. I've played some single player Tarkov that has a third person mod and it's like a static, a static yeah. camera. So that any time your character moves, the camera moves with it. There's no rotating of the camera. There's no up and down motion of the camera. It's just a static camera, which would that be better than no first person or no third person perspective? Maybe, but I just, I don't know. I don't want to beat a dead horse, but there's no you know, reason that they couldn't have made it so that there was both perspectives. That would have been the next logical step in the franchise. If you want to appeal to a wide player base, make it so that everybody can play the game in whatever perspective they want to make. Yeah, it would take a little bit more work depending on if there's a cover system because I know the cover system was a little bit buggy in Wildlands when you were in first person. But with proper development, you can fix that. Yeah. You know? So, I don't know. Well, the thing also is, for me, as someone who enjoys playing Arma and... um enjoys the ability like in armor if you're running at 12 o'clock you hold alt and you could continue running at 12 o'clock and look yeah right and every other first person game on the market especially for because of i, I would assume due to consoles it's like every time you turn you're here you, this is all this is all it is there's there's no actual head movement in these games and with breakpoint what really excited me about the breakpoint mod was the fact that Due to how Breakpoint was created in third person, you could be running any direction and rotate your your head yeah. any direction. Now, it was broken due to the camera. You could basically rotate your head 360 degrees. Right. But though, like, I would be excited if more first-person games kind of did things like that because I want to be able to have more of a, uh, uh, an, an opportunity to look at my peripherals and look this way and look that way in a first person game, which a lot of them just don't provide that option. Your gun is here, your gun moves everywhere you go, and that's how first person games usually operate. And knowing that this game will come to PC, it will come to console, I don't really think they're going to be able to remedy that. And since Breakpoint was a third person game and they modded it, you know, I don't think they're going to create it in that fashion. And if you played the first person mod in breakpoint you know exactly what i'm talking about your guy could just be running and you're looking around and you're still running at 12 o'clock no matter where you're looking like that really feels good and armor does that and that's what i would yeah. prefer if i am to play a first person game but every first person game is basically operated the same since the existence of first person games yeah. it's just your gun is there and it's always right there yeah so you know whatever yeah, and my argument for first-person games, and anybody who prefers first-person games, I'm sure yeah, Eagle... PUBG is, is like armor. Eagle will have something, I don't know, but like... like sta Sitting right here at my computer right now, I can see everything that's going on 180 degrees, pretty much. In a first-person game, 
There is no first-person game ever. You can put your field of view out as wide as you possibly can, but then it just yeah. the game looks like you're in a fisheye lens. There's never been a first-person game that could captivate having the peripherals, which obviously with a flat monitor in front of you, it's really hard to do that. But in a third-person game, because the camera's behind the character, you do have sort of a sense of your peripherals. For me personally, that feels more immersive. Some people would say that they want to see what their character sees. That's more immersive to them. But when, you, when you're playing a first-person game and it's tunnel vision, I just it's not immersive, at least not for me. Some people yeah, to each his own. Yeah, to each his own. That's why you should have had both. No reason not to have both. If the modding yeah. community can make it so we have both in the last two games, you know? And like even with, with that being said, too, is when you look at the first person mods for both of those games, i.e. breakpoint, it's broken when you switch between first and third because your head's yeah. gone. But when you're in first person, because it was developed in third person it's got the little bells and whistles that the first person games don't have Yeah, the way your weapons moving while you're running. It's not just a yep. generic, like your dudes just, you know, running like this. Uh huh. Yeah. It feels good. It feels good. It feels like it's supposed to feel because it wasn't meant to be in first person. It was developed in third person with all the proper animations. And then you move the camera so that it's in your face. And then you get to see all those proper third person animations in the first person perspective. That would have been, yeah. you could have even took that to the next level. And I feel like if a modder can do it, you know, throw 20 or 30 developers at it to make a first person, third person toggleable system. They could have done it. Whether or not we're like why they didn't. And this, this is all being based off the information that Tom Henderson got. Maybe it's a super early build of the game and maybe they're going to add it. Who knows? Somebody said that maybe they'll patch it in like they did with the breakpoint AI teammates. If they develop it from the start mm. in first person, that's um, not something you're going to be able to just patch into the game. We'll see. We'll see. So, I don't think I don't think we should worry about right. <laughs> like the game hasn't even been announced. We're we're talking right, about right. them patching something in, but uh, you know, forget all that stuff. Right. Let's look at it like this. A couple years back, we had uh, Frontline, right? Yes. And that is basically MIA at this point. We don't know what happened to it. It got canned they went back into development to release at a later time maybe now this is what i'm starting to think now you putting on your tinfoil hat for this i'm putting on my tinfoil hat i need to you know what for for these i need to make one so i could put it on while i'm talking maybe frontline is in the back they're still working on it and when over comes out which is now supposedly a first person game they're going to rebrand Frontline alongside it as the PvP standalone portion, you know, moving right alongside it. And the community is just going to have to accept it because now the entire thing will be in first person. So maybe there's something going on there. But the thing that, that I question about Ubisoft and the people making these decisions is that, yo... There was such a huge backlash about Frontline. Not only the mechanics and how it kind of looked like a silly battle royale with things falling from the sky, whatever, but that it was first person. Like, who asked for this first person battle royale? And now we're getting a first person PvE mainline, game. Mainline yeah. ghost recon. So now not nothing a spin makes off. sense to me anymore. Yeah, yeah. it's the mainline entry. Mm-hmm. So this was kind of funny worst too. Worst conspiracy. <laughs> worst conspiracy theory. He said no. <laughs> oh man, you know what's funny too is after uh, Tom Anderson put that leak out earlier, I was thinking of the tactical roundtable. It was about the time when Frontline came out. There's a I made a video talking about Frontline, and I put a segment from a tactical roundtable in there, and it was us talking about Frontline. But everything we said about Frontline, I could pull in that clip and play it right here, right now for you guys, and you wouldn't know the difference. Because of all the same uh, issues that we had with Frontline, mainly the first-person perspective. Yeah, there was some other gimmicky stuff in there. But, like, I believe I can quote you because I've actually went back and listened to this a few times, was the fact that a first-person Ghost Recon game, like, they pitched it and it got approved. After all of, like, if you want to go by sales, yes, Breakpoint was not. It didn't do good sales-wise. Why not go back to the Wildlands formula 
and take everything that you improved with Breakpoint into the Wildlands formula and progress from there, throw a first-person perspective in there so you got both. Bing, bang, bong. Printing money. Hire me, Ubisoft. <laughs> It's like, that simple, I, right? I, I it's that I mean, simple. It's, yeah, it's, I'm sure it's well, not just that well, simple. I'll tell but... you, I would, I would prefer to have had one more iteration in the third person with what we actually want: a, a squad-based tactical shooter with great commands, nitty-gritty environment, you know, just a, a realistic setting, and and let that flop, right? Let the let the market decide if that's what they want. And then they could say, look, we gave you everything what Ghost Recon is supposed to be and no one's buying it. And we think no one's buying it because no one wants to play a third person tactical shooter. The first person is, you know, where we should go moving forward. At that point, I could say to myself, look, I'm going to have to deal with this because for real, other than myself and A-Squad and a few guys in chat, no one bought the fucking game. <laughs> so, yeah. but they don't even give that to us. Wildlands was a success, supposedly, Breakpoint came along and instead of doing what Wildlands did good and maybe make like a part two or kind of like piggyback off of that, they completely revamp it. They give us a, a, a shitty island nobody cared about, a PMC faction nobody cared about. They try to push John Bernathal to sell it to us. Yeah. His his arc is useless. We have robots everywhere. They create a raid with looter shooter mechanics and, and gear score. We're shooting robots. We're shooting little square areas in the road. It's like everything with Breakpoint was just so all over the place that at that point, the market was like, yo, we don't want this. But then to turn around and be like, all right, complete rebrand, re first person, blah, 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 blah. I think it, it's it was a little too harsh at this point yeah. especially with the earlier info that tom henderson gave us about it being uh the nyman people and mongolia and the setting that i'm thinking about in my head with with those types of terrains and i've had videos on this in the past where i think an asian pacific theater would be really cool for a ghost recon setting especially with the political tension of today with china and knowing ubisoft that won't be china but you know there's yeah. always that kind of like you know how they do it I think, yo, they could have really hit a good home run if they would have just got back to the roots of the franchise. But if they go back to the roots of the franchise and it's first person and it's fucking rocking and it's an awesome game, we're shit out of luck because they're going to do everything we wanted them to do, but they're going to do it in first person. And if it works, that's going to justify, you know, the, the, the perspective yeah. that they created and they're going to keep it that way. You know, yeah. give us a first person robot game with looter shooter mechanics and people are going to be like nope but now they're going to probably flip it give us first person with everything we want oh, <laughs> just yeah. just fucking our luck bro and now we're going to be stuck with a first person ghost recon game which hey like i said is going to work for a lot of the guys out there they you know they're first person fanatics yeah. that's what they want it is what it is imagine if every like everything so you have your giant list of player feedback over the last well six plus years from like wildlands it was seventh anniversary a couple days ago you have this whole list of things that you want and they go down through there and they check every single box and make it a first person game like <laughs> i don't know i don't know i think i don't know it just doesn't seem like you said maybe somebody the higher ups they did a poll or they did a study and then they you know God forbid they're, you know, market chasing market trends. You know, there's a lot of first person games doing very, very well. Um, uh, real quick before I continue, Coop Collins, how reliable is the leaker? What's his track record on leaks? He's almost always right. Yeah, it's Tom, it's Tom Henderson. It's Tom Henderson. In, Tom Henderson is one Twitter. That's the guy. And then Insider Gaming is like his website. Yes. That's where he publishes a lot of his stuff. Nine he, times out of ten, he doesn't get anything wrong. Yeah, he tries to cooperate shit, and when it's like it's worth covering. When he leaks something, it's worth covering. Twitter yeah. leaks fifty million things a day. When Tom Henderson says something, it's worth taking a look at because yeah, more times than not, he's he's between right. between him and uh, Jason Schreer, they don't just hear something and post it. Yeah, they yeah. verify it somehow, which obviously whoever they verified it with said something they weren't supposed to say. And this is how he got the information. But anyway, 
he has to verify it. He verifies it before he says anything. So when he actually does say something, you can, it has some weight to it. He's, he's very seldom wrong when he posts something, because if he's not 99.9% sure, he doesn't normally post it. So he's even said that before where like he, I can't remember if it was Assassin's Creed. No, it was Battlefield. Somebody wanted him to leak the details of Battlefield. And he's like, I'm still waiting on a few sources to corroborate this info. If I get all that, I'll make an article on it. Until then, everything is kind of hearsay. So it's not worth covering until I can get the facts. So yeah. he's very reputable. Just wanted to put that out there. So And uh, look what, like, what, what Vandar said is... Uh... Very ironic that when Breakpoint finally got to a decent place with Motherland, then it got canned. So, whatever. Yeah, it is what it is, bro. Was it too much to ask to have Motherland on steroids with the animations of Breakpoint, the living open world of Wildlands, with, if you want to do raids, that's fine. Do raids, but have them be like tactical raids. Mm -hmm. Like Drewski talked about in his video, like from... I don't know, two, three years ago now about actual recon in a ghost recon game, you know, like yeah, yep. military, like strike missions or something, not go and you have to fight these massive robots like eight times and then get to a final thing where you got to shoot squares out of a thing or whatever. Like, <laughs> so, so, so yeah, I, here's, here's an honest question I have for you and I have for people in chat right now, uh, for the community at large, if you, come by here later on when it's just a you know video and you're watching this you get to this point you know twitter comment whatever this is what i want to know from you people regardless of your preference of first versus third if ubisoft hits mechanically and the setting narrative all that if they hit that on the head do you think the next game could be a huge success being that the first person market is still a very popular market just because you don't like that perspective and those types of games or whatever, blah, blah, blah. You know, that doesn't mean necessarily that Ghost Recon is going to fail at that point. Do you guys think it could succeed and be a very successful game if they actually hit everything correctly? Yes, I think it can be a very successful game, and that's what I'm scared of, to be honest. Like you said earlier, if they give us all the things that we possibly could have wanted in a giant trick-or-treat bag or whatever for the next Ghost Recon, and you kind of put the asterisk with it that it's first person, but if they give us all those other things that everybody wanted, and it appeals to the Call of Duty player base, the Ready or Not player base, the Battlefield player base, as a more tactical option that's not arcade or it's not you know, super milsim, like uh, what Gray Zone sounds like it's going to be. Like, it could. It could succeed. Yeah. It's, I mean... Every, I, everybody vote, vote in the poll in chat. Everybody yeah. vote in the poll in chat. I mean, I'll be honest, like, I'll I'll play it. It's Ghost Recon. It's My channel is all Ghost Recon. If I cover something else, it doesn't do anything. I know, bro. I, can't, I cannot do anything. <laughs> I try to put some hell diver shit up, bro. And like 10 people will click on it and try yeah. to watch it. <laughs> so I, I think it could do well. Is it going to appeal to the core ghost recon player base? I don't think so. And I think that's where like the core ghost recon player base, not to get off off topic here, but the core ghost recon player base, I would almost feel like I got, I got, I got did wrong, I guess. Like, I got the cold shoulder from the developers. I mean, I shouldn't say the developers because I would assume it's not the developers that made this call. It's way higher up than just your, your normal developers. But, like, you have your core Ghost Recon player base. Yes, the older games, there was a couple of them first person, but the majority of the last games, if you came in in Wildlands, Wildlands was your first game, you're expecting the next game to be third person. A lot of the player base came from Wildlands. Well, dude, no, yeah, I mean... Wildlands was a smash let's hit. Honest. Let's be honest, all right? wildlands then you have uh future soldier if you were playing phantoms online if you played grow one or two like yo dude even if you played the og ghost recon nobody in 2024 is expecting to get the for the next game to be a crosshair on your screen like we evolve past things we the the, the game and the culture was designed around a certain perspective a certain fundamental 
uh, and m mechanical outline that made Ghost Recon what it is today. And yo, know, they're they're they abandoned it with Breakpoint. Mecha uh, mechanically, story wise, it was abandoned, and now they're abandoning uh, the perspective. And so, you know, it's like it's 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 up in the air at this point what we're gonna get as far as narrative and all of that. So, and like I said, it's it might be a good game. It, it'll just be in first. Yeah. 45, 45 votes. I didn't mean to actually click end on that by accident, but third person, 82%, first person, 17%, to each their own. I'm not saying that third person is king. Yeah, third yo, person, but you know what? Let me, let me, I'm sorry to cut you off. Go ahead, hit, if, hit me with if, it. If Drewski posted that, it would be the oh, complete yeah. opposite. 100%. It'd be 90% so, first person. Yeah, so, you know. Which, as an executive that doesn't, how, how do I put this lightly? As an executive that probably doesn't know about what the game actually is, they're just kind of calling the shots, looking at the books. When you have a YouTuber that has 1.5 million subscribers or That's more. It. Does have like two, two, I don't, three maybe, at this point? Maybe he does. All those subscribers, and if he put up a poll that got him, you know, 300,000 votes that said, you know, 90% of people, that's going to pull a lot more weight than me. Yeah. So yeah. my community is mainly a third person community, but obviously they saw the trends and everything and they want to make a game in first person. If they give us everything that we asked for and it's in first person, it kind of sucks that it's in first person, but it could still obviously be a decent game. It's going to be kind of a letdown that it's not third person, but so, all right, let's see. So we're 41 minutes into this and we're still kind of talking about the first person. Do we kind of want to touch on a few of the other things that were in that article? Sure. So first yeah. being the fact that everybody, you know, the original leak was 2025. It's now saying 2025, 2026. So we could be possibly from this point still two plus years out from yep. a release which would put it at what six to seven years post breakpoint. Yeah. Like that's a long time between games. That's like, that's creeping yeah. up on grand theft auto status. I, yeah. And imagine, imagine taking seven years to make a first person shooter. Like I would expect seven years and you're going to have the greatest of third person animations. The market has ever seen. You know, yeah. uh, that is kind of crazy to think of it that way. But um, does does Ubisoft Paris did they do the dance dance? Did they? Yeah, their IP as Ubisoft well? Paris you know? is like the second you know largest. They... It's the second largest yeah. Ubisoft studio though. They got two hundred plus. Oh, employees. didn't they do the Mario Rabbids as well? Yeah. That Mario game. Yeah. So who knows, man? Who knows how the development cycle is working over there? But it is going to be a long time for Ghost Recon. Uh. It's been 12 years, right? Since the last Splinter Cell game. Uh, yeah, it'd be 12 Rainbow years Six, this year. Rainbow Six Siege came out. That was 2015. That's been almost 10 years. It. Then it's been, it was uh, Rainbow Six, what the hell was it called? Aliens, I'd like to call it. Extraction. Rainbow Six Extraction. Whatever you happened know. to that? That just, did yeah, it ever the, release? Did it actually yeah, release? Yeah, it released. And the, and the and people were like, hey, 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 okay, next. Because who the who wanted that? Who asked for Rainbow Alien games? So yeah, they better not do that with the next Coast Recon game, bro. I swear. Yeah. Holy shit. Uh, real quick, Marad coming Marad. in with another eleven dollars and ninety nine cent dono. Appreciate it, buddy. Worst choice ever. Strong competition coming in a space that is already saturated. Yeah, yeah. I I couldn't yeah. I couldn't disagree. Yeah. I mean. The only thing that they kind of have going is if they do go like full on tactical, like give me proper AI controls that we haven't seen since Ghost Recon One, Ghost Recon Two, yeah. maybe Graw. Um, but give me some of that. Make it a super super tactical game. Give me some breaching mechanics. Give me some leaning. Give me some. Maybe like even when you're crouched, you can kind of do like what you can do in Tarkov. You can kind of do like that real like low lean stuff like that. Um, if it's going to be first person, I don't want to just be like Doom. I don't want to be walking around with my gun up like that. Give me low ready. Give me high ready. Give me yeah, it's gotta have holstered in a sling. Yeah, yeah, like a yeah. sling where you just have like your sidearm out. I don't want mm -hmm. my gun to just magically like 
the same animation where he like reaches up over his back and pulls it off his back. I want that thing slung in front of me. Yeah. Like even Call of Duty, um, Modern Warfare 2019, like you can look, you can look straight down. You can see your feet. If you switch to your sidearm, your gun is slung in front of you. Like it should be, even though that's a first person game. Imagine that. How long were people asking for a sling for Breakpoint and whatever Ghost Recon in general? Now you're going to get a sling, but it'll be in first person. <laughs> dude, okay. I, Eagle, about third person, dude. Like, relax. Any yes. Squad just proved Wildlands isn't tactical. That's what you're talking about? Wildlands. He thinks it's more like GTA, just because. What's the correlation? It's open, world? it's open world. You can call vehicles in and stuff. It's still, I mean, you can still, still issue fun. commands still to your fun team. Game. Yeah. Oh, it, Kenny it, Man Civic. Yeah, buddy. Four ninety nine cent uh, donation. I keep thinking of Brothers in Arms lately. Where has that been untouched for a long time? I don't think I played that. I don't know what that is. Is that Dude, bad? That those, I don't know what that is. Just like, like a World yo, War II just, game. Just like what we're saying now, like yo, dude, you we better be, you better be hopeful that this genre can maintain itself because other than these indie guys who can kind of get away with it, like yo, this next game if it doesn't hit, Ghost Recon might be like Splinter Cell. You might not see it for another ten years. Who knows? I mean, we're is... already not going to see it for ten years by the time it comes out. Shit. Right, and then remember the Splinter Cell. You're going to get a new Splinter Cell, but it's just a remade original Splinter Cell. Yeah, yeah it's well, probably going to look... expand on it. It's going to look sick. You know, when was the first one released? No, they have to expand on it. I think it was like 01, 02. You're talking like, by the time that releases, you're talking 25 like years. No, nah, yo, they have to expand on it. Like, for instance, like the CIA board, it, has, it can't be just like the same thing. It has to be a whole building. It's got to be more like uh, Sniper Elite or Hitman to where it's a whole open environment and it resembles the original, but it's still like, it, I don't think they could do a one-to-one -on -one 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 replica. I don't think that's going to work. Yeah. With that being said, that's going to be our last third-person tactical shooter. Sniper Elite. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it is different then ghost recon obviously it's not the same but it is a third person you you actually i would say you have to be more tactical in that game than you do in breakpoint for instance especially if you play on the harder difficulties oh, and you're Lord. trying to snipe with yeah. the with judging everything give us a sniper elite six in a modern setting with a squad then, <laughs> that, would, that would be it. that would be crazy dude imagine like i would be fine with sandbox maps if it was something like that that'd be cool uh what about something similar to sniper ghost warrior that's it's a first person sniper game it's i've played it nothing it feels like a sniper version of call of duty um, but yeah you guys can tear them up in chat saying that wildlands is like grand theft auto hit them with it um what was the next thing that was kind of on the thing there next um, goes uh, let's see as far as the article yeah, next Ghost Recon 2526. Franchise head back to the first person perspective. The game is poised to be a squad based military tactical shooter, almost milsim like in nature. Okay, that's interesting. I don't. There is no console then, game that is a but tactical. Then, but then, bro, almost milsim like in nature, that will also take inspiration from some of the leading first person military games, including Modern Warfare. So it's like Battlefield. Those are Modern Warfare. Yeah, those are not Milsim. Those are not Mils. Yeah, those are super arcade. S and then squad ready, ready or not, not, which is more like a yeah. uh, a, um, a, a SWAT type of based game. So it is leaning farther towards Milsim, especially Squad. We got we. I mean, we have to at this point. That's a weird series of games to put together. Yeah, because Modern Warfare, the, Battlefield, other than Squad, them, other ready than or them not. being first person, they're okay. not really similar. So. <laughs> Let's see. Um, Project Over is set during the Name and War, which you kind of touched on in one of your previous videos. Uh, Southeast Asia country, which if we go by like what uh, the Name and people, possibly Mongolia. Um, but it says that it's seen hundreds of thousands of people die as a result of war crimes. And it is understood that the plot of the game evolves around the ghosts 
which is your team infiltrating the war zone to carry out secret missions and to locate a traitor. So if we go to the secret mission, so we're talking about what do they call it, the, the super secret squirrel shit, which is kind of mm-hmm. what the ghosts are supposed to do. Yeah. Like in Wildlands, you kind of, there was no emphasis. I mean, you could stealth some stuff, but there was no penalty for not going stealth. Well, that's just, I mean, that's, that's the difference between, uh, they call it little narrative dissidents. That's the difference between the actual narrative and story and what they actually create as far as mission structure or an end gameplay. So it could be like you're infiltrating the war zone and carrying out secret missions. And then halfway through the game, you're in a shootout. With, you know, it's like it, it's, it, it all depends on how they want to take you through the game and take you through the gameplay. Look at them. Um, we could use Future Soldier as an example. You're you're going into these missions and you're stealth, and then out of nowhere, you have the freaking HVT, and you're in a shootout, and it's kind of like a a a, a, a linear, um, programmed little tunnel path that you go this way, and you could only look this way, and the guy's moving on his own, and guys are coming from this way now, and you got to shoot them. So it's like they can create whatever they want to create as far as gameplay wise, and then tell you that the story is going to be this. And it really doesn't have to match up. So he's going to say this, because this is what Ghost Recon sounds like, but who knows what the missions are going to be and how it's going to be structured and any of that. So, you know, I wouldn't read too much into that. Uh, we, we really have to wait a year, two years to see that initial trailer, to see those gameplay mechanics, to see if they are really going to bring us back towards that that tactical feeling, the squad based mechanics, and things like that, because at this point we're we're so far away, 2025, 2026. The only real juiciness from this, in my opinion, other than knowing that the narrative and the setting is going to be with these nine man people or whatnot, and that it's going back to first person. Anything other than that, it's like it's up in the air. Mod, is it Call of Duty? Is it ready or not? Is it squad? And they're like, you know, it is what it is at that point. We just have to wait and see. Yo, I cannot hear you, brother. Did you mute yourself? That's because my mic was muted. I had to sneeze go. or something, and I muted my mic. Um, going down through the chat, uh, Profi said that I don't see uh, how this is the move the game needed. I don't either. Um, well, the franchise, yeah, the, the move the franchise needed. Yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think so either. It's definitely not the move, in my opinion. But with that being said, maybe I'm not the target audience anymore. You know, it's, if they want to go this direction and they're kind of focusing more on the call of duty, you know, those battlefields, stuff like that. Then me as a third person tactical shooter enjoyer, I'm not the target audience anymore. So the core ghost recon community isn't the target audience anymore, which is kind of weird, but who knows? Like I said, who knows, who knows who made this call? How, how high up was this call made? Who knows? Nobody knows. Who knows if it's super early in development and it's a both. We don't know. We're just basically going off of what Tom Henderson said, and in whatever he got information-wise in the game's current state, it's a first-person tactical shooter. So, uh, Zimmy, dude, that quote will live on in my brain forever. Ghost Recon should have the ability to micromanage or more specifically manage your AI team members, but should also permit third and first person. It shouldn't need to be one over the other. Agreed. The fact that when they released the AI teammates update and breakpoint and said no need to micromanage, that that's gonna stick with me forever. Like, cause we want to micro. At least I want to micromanage. Maybe not everybody wants to micromanage your teammates, but yo, this goes back to a lot of people questioning if Ubisoft was actually listening to us and listening to the community, listening whether it was Reddit, YouTubers, um, forums. At no point in time did anybody say this game should uh, be turned into a first-person game. At no point in time prior to Breakpoint did anybody say we'd rather a uh, looter shooter type of uh, scenario with tiered loot and um, raid systems like uh, uh, The Division. So other than the fact that they gave us immersive mode, which was basically just, okay, just hide gear score from these idiots so they stop complaining. Other than that, 
And then other than us getting a fabulous update in Operation Motherland, which at that point I felt like they were listening to us because we had been asking for a, a vibrant world that responded to what you did in game, which so you destroyed these trucks, you had less reinforcements, you destroyed this, there was no air support, you know, that shit worked. Yeah. So we got we got those couple things. So it was like, all right, maybe they're finally listening to us. And then it was like, all right, we're not developing for Breakpoint anymore. Slap in the face after the game felt like it was turning around. And now, what was Motherland? Three years ago? Two years ago? Now, however, two, three years later, yeah, we get... 2021. Boom. Yeah, 2021. So now three years later, it's like, okay, guys, here's your, uh, here's your first leak of what we're doing over at Ubisoft and we're giving you a first person game. So it's like now here we now we're on this this roller coaster the cycle yet again. continues. Yeah, the cycle continues now and now it's just something completely different. Okay, we're going to give you the nitty gritty but now it's first person. It's like you know, I give up at this point. You know, God bless for all the people who are stoked right now. Hopefully you get an amazing game. Um hopefully it can compete with games that are are coming out in the future, can compete with Call of Duty. Uh, we'll, we have yet to see what Gray Zone Warfare has yet to to offer. They really haven't released any type of raw gameplay that is going to showcase what they have on their hands. Other than the few things that I've seen, that is actually looking pretty good. Uh, again, it's first person, but it's not like I'm I'm not willing to play first person games. I just really didn't want Ghost Recon to become one. Yeah, and you know, here we are. Yep. It's kind of the general consensus right now, too, pretty much across the majority of... Obviously, like you said, if Drewski put out a video, oh, look, the Ghost Recon got leaked and it's first person, like... You know, he, he might, he, he might. might. And he'll just you be know, like, got, you know, we praise gotta... the Lord, finally. And like, I don't know. Yeah, we have to see. We have to see what a lot of these first person guys... There's Drewski, uh, I know Karma Cut is one of them. Control Paris has gotten uh, pretty popular on YouTube the past year or two. Um, who else is there's a couple other guys, man. Uh, there's Tacti Gamers out there. There's a few channels, some guys I follow on Twitter. Oh, Big Fry. He he covers a lot of games, but he does, you know, first person a lot. A lot of these guys I follow on Twitter, some of them I follow on YouTube. But, you know, there is a huge, huge demand from these channels, from what I see, of like great first person games. But I don't know if those same people turn around and are like, nah, I'd rather ghost recon be a, a third person game because that's not my community i can't tap into that i would like to see but all i all i remember is one of drewski's polls where he said what would you prefer first or third and a lot of them said first for yeah, ghost it recon. was it was like a 75 25 or even more yeah i do remember that so yo guys you might just be the odd man out and you might just have to eat shit at this point <laughs> but i don't yeah. want to i want my third devil person dog, yeah daniel st john devil dog gamer right yeah, oh, he's, the, he's, he's the one that actually does stuff for, I think he does stuff for Gray Zone, I think. But what were you going to say? You don't want to, um, I don't want, you don't, I don't want, want your I, Ghost Recon? No. Yeah, so it was a year ago. I'm just, I'm creeping over on Drewski's channel. Uh, over a year, what would you want the next Ghost Recon to be? 61,000 votes. And it was a 71% first person, 29% well, you could You could see person. the number of votes as well, right? Like how many voted in both? You can't. No. Okay. So what was it? Sixty-one thousand votes. Sixty-one thousand votes. Seventy-one percent said. So, wow. Yeah. Three quarters, almost, almost three quarters. Mm-hmm. So you're talking forty-five thousand votes. Yep. Forty-two thousand votes or something that said first person. Yep. So. I don't know. Maybe the only third person tactical shooter we're going to have going forward. And that's the thing the Division Heartland. Whatever happened to the Division Heartland? Is that ever going to release? Who I don't knows? know. At least, at least we still have the Division. I know they're going to make Division 3 after they freaking did Avatar in first person. Indiana Jones is coming out in first person. That Damn. Avowed game is coming that's out in funny. first person. You know, John and Drewski and his audience are brain dead dorks. <laughs> <laughs> who said that john john and drewski and his audience are brain dead dorks oh, man. uh coop collins though yeah but the drewski uh, guy all, plays first mostly all, first shout, person shout games. out shout out to, shout out to drewski man he's he's he does a lot he's always keeping he's a legend funky. in the tactical shooter genre yeah yeah nothing against drewski but 
Yeah, yo, soggy waffles. First of all, what's up? Second of all, of course, everybody here, especially if you're losing the perspective you want to play with, you're, everybody's going to want both perspectives. And ever since the Wildlands mod came out, we've been saying, yo, dude, this is this is how Ghost Recon should be moving forward. Yo, both perspectives smash. And and here's why. When you get into the nitty gritty of, of uh, CQB and uh, close quarters combat, you might want to go into first even as a third person gamer you might want to pop in and out and to have that in your games is fucking awesome man because you could just play how you want but yo it's tough i'm sure it's tough to develop for not a lot of developers do that shit rock stars in a league of their own with that shit and um you know shout out to bethesda for doing it for uh, starfield i wish starfield you know had hit harder than it did yeah. Um, I do see some people and I'll be like, no, get out of here. Like trolling, being an asshole. But I do see some people wishing that hell divers also had a first person perspective because you can aim down sight. It's like, yo, just let us go into first as well. Although I disagree with the type of gameplay hell divers is, um, you know, some people just, yo, they want both in their games, but it's gotta be tough to develop for both. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I'm not, I'm no developer. And especially when oh, you look yeah. at, well, you can say that again, <laughs> this guy. <laughs> and then, I mean, what if, uh, so if they're going to first person, I guess the next question would be, are they still using Anvil? Are they still, oh, absolutely. Is there... as long as Paris is making it, they're absolutely using Anvil. Have we seen an Anvil next game in first person? I don't think that matters. The engine, the perspective isn't going to matter. It's all that matters is, you know, what the, what the development studios comfortable with there's no way they're not going to use anvil this is what they've been using yeah, for how long that's true yeah you know real quick uh john keegan we've seen you in here bro good to see you brother keegan what up brother we're doing good we're just soaking well, up our tears yo, yo ton <laughs> that's a that's a good point and that's something i can get on board with because i could understand developers looking towards the future and saying, you know, let's start figuring out how virtual reality is going to work, especially for the tactical genre. I think virtual reality works very well for that genre because it's not too crazy. It's very simple. It's just shooting, you know, shooting movement. So I could understand that. And there are some things that I've seen for, for VR with that, that I, you know, but still, if these games aren't going to VR, uh, other than maybe behind the scenes stuff where maybe there is a direct correlation with creating it in, in first, putting it on the market console PC and then being able to port it over easy to VR. Like, I don't know, but that is a good point. And maybe that's, that's one of the reasons who knows. Yeah. I don't know. Um, King... red, red, Mo, red mono eye real quick. Yo, he's predicting there's going to be a second release. That's in third person, similar to what rockstar did with GTA. That's interesting. I didn't think of that. I don't know. But... As a make you buy it again? No, as a, I don't know about it again, but like they'll re release it almost oh. and there'll probably be an update for people. Yeah. And it's like now you can play in this perspective or whatever. Well, who are you going to shout out? Uh, So King King Mankovic, I uh, wonder if Red Storm will assist in Ghost Recon. I don't think so. Red Storm is not the Red Storm yeah. that it used yeah. to be. They don't do none of these studios are none of them. You got to remember you, Red... especially you old <laughs> bastards out there. King, I don't know how old you are, but I'm in my forties now. I am an old man. And when I yeah. look, I know, right. <laughs> so I, I can't look back and think to myself, well, why can't, um, like for instance, uh, with the original splinter cells, it's like, well, why can't Ubisoft just do that? It's like, yo, those people are gone. <laughs> Yeah. everybody who made the first Ubisoft, they're gone dude yeah it's just a, it's just a company name at this point yeah now you have tons and tons of different people in these in these uh positions and you know you're thinking that yo this studio made this 12 years ago they should be able to do it it's like yo bro all those people are gone the talent is somewhere else they all find different yeah. jobs they retire yeah. so yeah there was actually a uh was it a decent amount of the original ghost recon gays they do uh I'm drawing a blank now. Yo, it's plus, the other the uh, other Red first Storm's person shooter. Heartland. Yeah, what's the other first person shooter? Uh that we I dabbled in a little bit. 
It's got the where you can customize your chest rigs and stuff, and we've talked about. I'm just trying, hmm. dude. I'm drawing. A, I'm got a brain fart. I own it. I don't remember. No. You own a first person shooter. Yeah, <laughs> this guy. Yeah, Man. I just can't remember. Uh, Ground Branch. Ground Branch. Oh, some Ground of the old Branch. Ghost Recon devs made Ground Branch. So, let me King scroll. Yeah, see you thirty. Yeah, yeah, let me let me scroll back know. up here and get a couple of these things. So real quick, uh, the couple yeah, donuts coming in. Out. Uh, Deuce Pigeon, uh, ten dollar yeah, yeah, donation. Pigeon. Anyone know what the difference between Snowdrop and Anvil? Yes, yeah, I would two different engines, two different game engines that are both uh, like what would you call those? Like first party game engines, Ubisoft. Yeah. Nobody they're else. They're just different those. engines, dude. Yeah, they're different. Those are Ubisoft. They're completely different engines. It's so like, Ubisoft it's like Massive if, is Snowdrop, basically, yeah, and then it's like if you wanted to make a video game and you made it in Unreal, and then your friend was like, "Oh, I'll help you," but he makes games in Unity. Right. It's like, yo, it's, it's two completely different engines. I would say that I would love to see a, like, third per, like a, the third person tactical shooter in the Snowdrop engine. I mean, if you would, if you were to take the Division 2 and yo, make it so it wasn't an RPG shooter. I, I don't know, dude. Because that Star Wars game didn't look that amazing, <laughs> in my opinion. Yeah, but that's just, that's, that's Star Wars for you. Yeah, but still, I think ma- I think massive is st- like the way the way they created the animations for Breakpoint is the way and the camera system. That's the type of camera system I like nowadays. I don't like I don't like strafing and the camera always locked behind you. And that's how it looked like for the Star Wars game. Yeah. yeah. So also five dollar dono from Techie says, "Bro, I Techie! love Ghost Recon. I'm old as fuck." <laughs> With the, oh. <laughs> started with the og on pc wildlands changed everything for me when i look at the series since the beginning okay like so in a look, good way wait it, so ask him right techie techie right now in chat what do you prefer you prefer the og crosshairs just crosshairs on a screen or first person or did wildlands bring you out of your shell and you have seen the light and you prefer the third person perspective now yeah. like where where are you now in your gaming journey yeah, let me let me also hit this real quick. So Daniel St. John, which aka Eagle, because I timed Eagle out. You could still chat now. It was only a five minute timeout, but I had to, I had to. What did Eagle do, <laughs> dude? It's just the comp, the comparison of GTA to Wildlands. I I couldn't. I needed a break. Eagle, but he said, you didn't but deserve that Eagle. But he said, if they make a good Ghost Recon game with a good squad based tactics, is it the end of the world that it's first person? No, it's not the end of the world. But is it the right decision? In my opinion, no. It's not to abandon your core player base to chase a separate player base that may not play your game anyway, unless it's perfect. No, I don't think that's the right call. Is it the end of the world? No. Is it the right call? Also? No. Um, I'm like way behind on the chat. Now I got to scroll down through here. Sniper Elite so five was the worst in the series. I don't remember sniper. I know we, we played a little sniper elite four. I think I, li- I like five. I liked four. I played a little with, is it three, three I have on P- PS is it three or four? I think I have it up there somewhere. Yeah. But um, I don't know. We, we, I'm not here to argue what's the best of Sniper Elite. You know, whatever. I, I'd like to read read Zimmy Ko if that's cool. Oh he Lord. says uh, all Ghost Recon games are tactical shooters. Wildlands may offer more opportunities for arcade style players, but that doesn't mean it takes all the tactical opportunities away. And I think that's a, that might be a direct response to someone like eagle or or other people who say who think it's not a tactical shooter uh, i don't really know what qualifies the uh to a lot of you as like this is just tactical shooter this is just an arcade shooter i don't know if it's difficulty i don't know if it's specific types of mechanics i know i could assume because i talk about it on my channel things like ballistics and things of that nature can make a game feel more like a tactical shooter and wildlands doesn't have the greatest ballistics but for what it did back in 2017 with its open world and one of the first open world tactical shooter games outside of something like grand theft auto uh, Meta- spinoffs well 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 grand theft auto spinoff but uh Metal sorry I, I had to throw that in there because <laughs> i'm mean, crying because i can't spin-off. handle opinions so um no but metal gear solid 5 was really the first like open world stealth game and then wildlands a couple years later really really pushed on that and created you know the first ghost recon open world game and i think as far as tactically like yo dude 
you play on a hard difficulty on tier mode, you got to move the right way. And in ghost mode, let's say, right? You can't tell me it's not going to be qualified as a tax shooter because you put, you drop yourself in with three of your buddies and you say, yo, we're playing this game on the hardest difficulty, tier 10, whatever the fuck. And if we die, we die. And we got to keep going as long as like, yo, you're going to play slower. You're going to play more tactical. You're going to call out commands. You're going to make sure, you know, you flank the right way. You pincer move the right way. You're going to do a lot of things the right way. Now, on the other end, you can drop the settings all the way down and play like a noob and just have fun. I don't think that necessarily means the game is less or more tactical. It's just Ubisoft provides you enough difficulty levels for it to be challenging or not. Yeah. And then, of course, you know, like I said, there are some mechanics ai teammates for one that are just bad yeah that are, you know and i agree with that yeah real quick whip flame is in the what chat it, what up brother he says what up boys ah, just talking about if you're if you just got here whip flame if you haven't seen the news there was a leak stating that the next ghost recon game is going to be a first person tactical shooter so that's what we've been talking about for the last hour and 10 minutes so yeah, this is an this is an interesting dichotomy that Jordan Towner says. He's like, when he thinks of a first person game, he thinks small maps, story driven missions like Call of Duty, and when he thinks third, he thinks of open world, non linear like Wildlands, and that's that's interesting. That is interesting. See, that's where the the how I've said it. Like when I play Daisy and I play a few other games that have both. If I'm out in the open world, like exploring, I'll keep it in third person exclusively. Do I prefer third person all the time? Yes. If I'm in a tight where I'm in inside of buildings, when it just makes more sense to be in first person, I'll switch to first person. There's the camera clipping issues and stuff when you're in third person, so on and so forth. But yeah, third person, first person should have had both. Yo, yeah. but yo, Eagle. Wildlands, I mean, we're going off topic now. Wildlands might not be a great tactical squad-based shooter because it doesn't have mechanics that squad-based shooters should have. Being able to really pinpoint where your guys are going, them being really competent or not shooting through walls and things like that. Like, we understand that. We understand that Ubisoft failed on that front, and we want that to be better. But it still doesn't mean that, they, like, they still tried. And you could still remove the AI teammates and play with friends, and it's doesn't mean the game becomes you know any less of what it can be depending on the difficulty you, like i said if you get four guys together you play all the way up to the whatever tier you guys can get up to in ghost mode like you get some of you got you're gonna die you're gonna get knocked off you get it's it's gonna get to the point where you realize okay yo this difficulty is getting crazy because the double uzi guys are gonna pinpoint you from fucking 60 meters out shoot you in the head and you're going to get to the, you know, to the realization like, yo, we got to move, move a little more quote unquote tactical. Yeah. Let's yep. look at the upside. Maybe the resources used on creating the third person we use to give us the laundry list of other improvements we want. Yo, but the thing is, Collins, is that th they're different departments, your animation team. And then the guys that program that in, it's going to be different guys than are that are working on AI teammate controls and things like that so i i do hear what you're saying though that that is true oh yeah yo jason van horn with the ten dollar dono says a squad you should be playing brothers in arms it's first person tactical shooter set in world war ii era command control is simple one uh one is base a fire team and the other hand assault team it's so fun kind of sounds like a socom different fire teams and stuff like that i might have SOCOM, to look into that r.i.p socom man see there's another studio that close just to 25 years ago themselves Close to 25 years ago, and they had better tactical controls. <laughs> Yo, Penguin, what up, bro? The double Uzi guys. And dudes are super accurate. They're, they got trained by Bookhart. That's why. They got trained by Bookhart. <laughs> yeah, that, that's what it is. That's what it is. Oh, man. Is there a chance they released a game with AI teammates that can play with our friends at the same time? I mean, we, we don't have any info on that. I know a lot of people in the community have asked, hey, or have, you know, talked about the fact that if a team, if a friend comes in to your game, you should each still have like one teammate. So four friends coming in with one teammate each would be kind of cool. But 
it all depends on how they try to balance things, how they create things. I don't know. I don't even know if it's going to be a four man anymore. I'm hoping, I'm hoping that the fact that we're moving into next gen, Ubisoft can give us at least a squad of six, eight individual controls, uh, things of that nature. Maybe you could double them up more, you know, like, I don't know, man. I just, I'm hoping it's, it's a little more than just, okay, we're taking the same formula, but now it's first person because that will be really disappointing. Yeah, because what did they say towards the end of the article that the graphics are highly improved? Yeah. With this long of a dev time, we would hope that the graphics are yeah. highly improved. But with that yeah. being said, the core mechanics, can we have a six-man, eight-man squad? Can we widen that out a little bit? Is there going to be a PvP? Like, I don't know. I would like to see bigger squads. I mean, especially when you don't maybe development time on not having to have all the third-person animations and stuff, maybe they can roll that into bigger squads, better controls more mechanics breaching mechanics peaking mechanics you know different weapon mechanics or something because now that the weapon is going to be the main character of the game uh who knows but if like it's like he said if they do an entire laundry list of things that we wanted it's gonna i don't know almost like rubbing salt in the wound to where we get all these things that we finally asked for, but then there's this catch 22 with it that it's first person. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So, so here's a question now for everyone in chat, the community, UA squad. How are we feeling with uh, everything going on in the world with wildlands being drug cartels in South America, um, with boat arcs being Russia, with in real life Russia Ukraine, with in real real life uh, geopolitical issues with China and the in the U S and the West and Russia in the West and everything that can be, whatever's go whatever can be going on in in Africa and and all of these countries the Middle East, we have anywhere and everywhere that we can have a campaign, and according to Insider Gaming and Tom Henderson, these nine man people which uh, reference, you know, uh, Mongolia or whatever. So we are looking at an Asian Pacific theme uh, enemies and all that. How are we feeling about the choice on this enemy faction and this part of the world when they could have taken it anywhere and had, and had, you know, any, any type of scenario, how are people liking this or, or the sound of it? Are people interested in that? Are they excited about it? Are they a little disappointed? Did they did they want to maintain uh, Ghost Recon's involvement with like Russia, Bold Arcs, and things like that? Were p- more people looking forward to? I know a lot of people were, but were people looking forward to maybe a Wildlands two to go back to the cartel? What is everybody thinking about the setting and the narrative moving forward from what we know right now? Uh, I mean, I'm not opposed to like the setting and the narrative. Um... What they say that there's an active war or something that there's war crimes and we're supposed to go in and be sneaky and all this other stuff. Um, yeah, that's just generic stuff, though. Yeah, but, as but I far, mean, as far as you know, this this Asian theme, are we okay with that? Do we think it's gonna fall flat? Is it another like playing safe? You know, what does everyone think? We got yeah, see, soggy waffles. I'm over the Russians. Maybe the Russians have been done to death so much. Yeah, um, I could go with that. Especially when they tried to hit you with the nostalgia with the Bodark. Like, Bodark was future soldier stuff. And then they tried to hit you with the nostalgia, you know, the rosy tinted glasses or whatever with Bodark, so. (laughs) Mongolia sounds excited if the game is set in the 1300s. Well, that's just the connection. That's just the connection made from uh, Nyman people, which references, like, the um, some shit in Mongolia. So there's some type of connection with that. I mean, we're, we're we we are still so far out, still uh, still so far out where we've yet to seen what we're actually going to get, but that's what yeah. it, it looks like it's going to be. And even according to Henderson, some type of a Southeast Asian um, enemy. So I don't know North Korea, whether North Korea, China. Yeah, I mean, we you know, we went to a... people. It's going to reference something like that, like how they did with mother. Um, Breakpoint with Aroa. It's not actually anything, but here, this is what you get. So it's going to be something like that. Yeah. Where, where did I just saw that comment? Uh, Southeast Asia Pacific setting would be great. A lot of geographical diversity. However, I'd be worried if it feels too 
uh, muck like breakpoint. Yeah, like that's the other thing too is is can we not have like a gray filter over the entire game, please? I get you're going for the nitty like the the grit and like the I don't know war or whatever, but man, you still gotta have some color. Still gotta have some color. Um, David Cox makes a good point here. Gray zone has the same exact setting, and gray zone is a from what they've shown so far, would be kind of like a combination, I would say, of Ghost Recon and Tarkov in a first-person open world. So, like, depending on when uh, when Grey Zone goes into early access and when Ghost Recon uh, Over, or whatever it's eventually going to be called, releases, yeah, those yeah. two can really... Uh, yeah, but Grey Zone looks like, like those their devs are showing shit off now that True. they're looking for... A, a release probably within the next year yeah where ghost recon is a couple years out so who knows gray's like if gray zone hits the mark and has the development time to really fine-tune things shit i'd be worried if i were fucking ubisoft if a, like an indie dev team can come in and just kind of steal your thunder especially you know, with but... like i feel like an indie dev can pay a lot more attention to detail they well, don't also, have all it's the... only on pc yeah and, and they PC did games they they are going to try to release it on console obviously once they get everything stable if they could yeah, re... we'll, we'll see we'll see okay. i think i think ground branch ready and all these guys probably yeah. would like to but, but we'll let's see. hypothetically let's say it releases on console i think i think then based off of what they've shown with it's on unreal engine 5 i feel like unreal engine 5 hasn't really had a chance to be showcased in the tactical shooter genre yet with what they're showcasing in that game. And then when you talk about the ballistics, everybody says, you know, what the Wildlands ballistics are terrible with the bullet drop. It's like an airsoft gun. And then you look at like the most recent dev blog that Grey Zone released with those ballistics. Like they are really trying to make it so that it's as realistic as possible when it comes to the ballistics. So, yeah, I don't know. We're not here to talk about Grey Zone, but it's definitely, that was a good point that it's a very similar setting. And yeah. now that it's been leaked that Ghost Recon is going first person, Grey Zone is first person, you know, obviously depending on when they release, but if if Grey Zone comes out first, it could definitely steal steal some thunder. Or you could even have the people throwing around the oh, you know, Ghost Recon tried to copy Grey Zone because it looked yeah. cool or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So who knows? Which I mean, if Breakpoint came out five years ago, there's like obviously this game has been in development before gray zone got announced so it's not like they're like "Ooh, that sounds cool let's do it better than them like that's that's yeah. obviously not the thing and he's and and tom henderson is consistent consistently now uh looking to get ghost recon info so he he's yeah. he's got his finger on the pulse um because what has it been now the past month or so we've gotten two big leaks uh for ghost recon at this point uh first it was the setting with this nine man people now it's this confirming that confirming a date that's going to release and confirming first person uh so he's looking to uh definitely extract as much info as possible for uh for this game which should yeah. be coming out within the next couple of years yeah yo keegan take it easy buddy he says all right guys i'm out have a great stream guys uh i got work keegan in the morning later, yeah we're probably not going to be on here too much longer because we've kind of well well penguin um Interested in multiplayer only game? Grayson hasn't peaked. Much. So, Penguin, you just want to play like a single player with AI teammates, or are you talking about PvP versus PVE? I'm pretty sure that they uh, one of the uh, either the dev blogs or I saw a dev talk about it that there's possibly going to be like a PVE uh, in Gray Zone. Goofy gamer, I doubt it. So. First, maybe they're simply focusing on first person right now in development and we'll have the ability to choose between first and third. I mean, make your opinions known on all of social media right now that you want both. I mean, it can't hurt at this point. If they're stuck that it's going to be first person only, make your voice heard. You know, maybe they'll, maybe if that's what they want to do, maybe they'll reconsider. But yeah, I doubt it. So we'll see. Yeah, I mean, 
Yeah, we'll see. They've said that they like when they when they ceased all development on Ghost Recon Breakpoint, they said that they were basically going to be taking everybody's feedback and using it for the future of the Ghost Recon franchise. I think that was like the tweet that they put out that they've been collecting data and all this other stuff to focus on the future of the Ghost Recon franchise. So what's the, the, the only thing us as players can do? Make your voices heard on social media. Yeah. Twitter, forums, Reddit. You know, um, Discord. That's about it. Yeah. Maximilian. Maximilian. Nine dollar ninety nine cent donation. This is the next game should be uh, should build a global op with a mission to eliminate the Bodarks for good. Use Splinter Cell Blacklist mission select and let us use a full military assets. See, that's even leaning a little bit towards like mercenaries. So, and actually, that's actually what does it say there? Let's celebrate their first super on a live stream. That's his first yeah, super yeah. chat. I was wondering what that logo was up there. Let's go. I mean, I don't know. They definitely have a, like, for instance, uh, Sniper Elite kind of does that. It's all in a specific theater, but it's not an open world. You're going on different operations, different sandbox locations. You know, you kind of pick your missions and kind of do it that way. Ghost Recon well, seems like they're going to be kind of stuck in that open world. Well, yeah this is something we have to ask do you guys still want so it's going to be a first person game do you guys still want open world games because maximilian's saying he'd rather have it to where you select a mission you use full military assets and that sounds more like a hitman or like you said a sniper elite where you play your mission you go in it's like a a, more of a sandbox you play that one level and then you go to the next level. That's more like how the old school games were, like, like kind of like um Future Soldier. You didn't really select your 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 mission, but you went through a series of little small sandbox missions. Like, what do you guys actually want? A kind of mixed open world, tactical sandbox over open world, but we're the minority here. So, Eagle, is that what you mean by tactical sandbox? You want something that's more like mission based, like uh, Sniper Elite, instead of an open world. Metro would, Exodus honestly, style of open world. I, I never played that. It's 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 kind of like goes through an open world period. It's kind of it's kind of like um, Sniper Elite. I would say a little bit. Okay. Yeah, it's kind of like Sniper Elite, more sandbox style. I wouldn't be opposed to that, to be honest. I wouldn't be opposed to it. Like if you had different, but then then where's the replay value? That's, yeah. Well, there you go. That's that's what Penguin said, and I agree. Now in my age now going through the entirety of the evolution of gaming, just like what Penguin said, it should be open world because the old school maps and that old school style of playing, it doesn't hold my interest as long. For instance, I love, I go back to Sniper, um, not Sniper really, uh, Hitman every once in a while because I like the gameplay. I like running around. I don't really play it like Hitman should be played. I kind of just grab guns and shoot guys to have a little fun. But after a while, it's like, all right, I'm done. Whereas something like Breakpoint or GTA, these games, they hold my interest so much longer. One, because of the uh, single player and multiplayer component where friends can come in. But two, just, you know, the open worlds just seem to keep me engaged longer for some reason. I don't know why. That's just how it works. Um, I don't see myself going through a game like Future Soldier or Sniper Elite. And then wanting to play one specific mission again and again and again and again. It's almost like, eh, whatever. I've been there, done that. Yeah. But for some reason, I can move around Breakpoint's map and conquer a compound I've probably conquered 20 or 30 times. But it still feels different and fresh because I haven't been there in a minute. And I've been on the other side of the map for the past three days. And so we really have to see as far as um what they're deciding to do. I would assume... We haven't had any info on this. I would assume it's going to be open world. Just because they go to first person doesn't mean it's not going to be right. But when I hear things like Modern Warfare, Battlefield Squad, and Ready or Not, I'm getting all contradicting like yeah. things right there. Because, all right, Battlefield's like a huge-ass Battlefield. All right, maybe that's open world. But Ready or Not is, is a level-based system. Modern Warfare has uh, Warzone. But then they have their campaign, which is one mission at it. Like, I don't even know what, what to think. Would they go to a, a back to a, an old school style where you're doing one mission at a time? Or 
Like, I, I don't, I don't think that's what it would actually be. I don't think that Ubisoft would abandon the open world formula at this yeah. point. But then it's kind of their bread and butter and the third person. Yeah. <laughs> I, thought, I thought third person was bread and butter and you know, who knows? yeah. Well, considering it's like somebody, the, all the far cry memes, like you were talking about, like we already got a first person like far cry. And then there's talking about like a first person extraction, something with the far cry PVP or whatever extraction, far cry spinoff thing or whatever. And it's like, okay, so then we have ghost recon. It's kind of like your outlier third person tactical shooter. And now they're going first person. So now you got far cry and you got this, but I see them sticking with the open world formula just because that's kind of Ubisoft's bread and butter as of late, whether it be Assassin's Creed, whether it be the division, I wouldn't, I don't know, I wouldn't call division like super open world, but the concept, I don't see them going away from that. Um, yeah. Deuce Pigeon Off with another play. $5 dono. Oh, nice. Yeah. Says, uh, dude, I love Ghost Recon Breakpoint, but replay the division two is insane. I'll be honest. I would totally be okay to go back and like play through the division two. It's been so long since Yo, I played we should do that. that. We should do a playthrough of it. That would be fun. I think I mean, on how long it's been since I played the division two. I only played like the first raid and I think the second raid. I have not played yeah. any of the other raids. No, I didn't yeah. do. I think, I think I went through the first raid. Yeah. I didn't do the warlords of New York. I didn't do any of that oh, DLC. No, that I did. Yeah. I didn't do that. So that would all yeah, be, that new. should, that should be fun. That should be fun. Yeah. And look at, look at Loftwing. If I wanted to play a first person shoot, I'd buy call of duty. That's what they're banking on. I feel that like is, if they're yeah. going, they want people that play Call of Duty to come over and play Ghost Recon. But 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 he's saying, like, yo, dude, but why would I do that? I'll just go play Call of Duty. Right. So that's where I feel like that's gonna that's gonna be the determining factor. If they're sticking with first person, like it was leaked, if they're sticking with first person, that's gonna be whether the game, you know, sink or swim or it flops mm -hmm. or whatever. Is if they can, if they're targeting the first person player base, if they can get enough people from the Ghost Recon, or not Ghost Recon, Call of Duty franchise, Battlefield franchise, Ready or Not, Tarkov, all those first person people, if they can get enough of those people to go and check out this game and buy it and have it be, because of that, be successful enough for them to maybe think, oh yeah, going to first person, that was, that was a good idea. See, we sold, you know, so much more mm -hmm. than we sold in Breakpoint, but it's like, yeah. It's not exactly a really high bar to compare to. Yeah. So, but on the sheets, on the books, from a higher up, like, yo, this first person game sold way better. We should just do first person games from now on. And then it's just going to be like, oh. Well, I mean, you have Jordan Towner here. He says, the decision to go to first person to reduce costs and to pander to Call of Duty 12-year-olds that have no patience to stealth. I mean, we don't know about the gameplay. It should still be Ghost Recon, even though it's in first. Yeah. And then also, um, we have, uh, what did I want to read right here? 22. Animations and cosmetics. And I agree with this 100%. Animations and cosmetics are a big part of Ghost Recon. And in first person, you get neither. Agreed, bro. Agreed. And 22, I don't know if you've seen any of my videos on Ghost Recon. That's all I talk about. For me, the immersive gameplay that comes from playing the Ghost Recon franchise stems from the animation, seeing my character, that gameplay that's rooted in third per in the third person perspective. And, you know, we're going to lose true. all of that. I, I did briefly kind of touch on that at the end of my video that I put out today about like all these people that like the, the, the code name or whatever for it is people that want to play, you know, dress up Barbie. They want to play yeah. dress up Barbie and ghost recon because the amount of things that you can change on your character. We were going, I mean, and they might still, you know, have full in-depth character customization, but I feel like it, the the appeal is not there if you can't see it. Yeah. yeah, you can kit out, if there's AI teammates, you know, you can kit out your AI teammates with how you want. If you're <laughs> playing with other people, they can dress up how they want and you can see them, but it kind of, it kind of like doesn't really matter what your character looks like with character customization and gear customization if you can't see it. Yeah. Unless they just do a bunch of glove and sleeve cosmetics. I don't know. Because like, that's the majority Weapon of what you're going to see. Cosmetics like uh, Call of Duty. Um, skin cosmetics like Call of Duty where you could play as uh, uh, Nicki Minaj. Oh my lord. Don't <laughs> I can't wait going. to go through the battlefield of Nyman and be playing as Nicki Minaj in a pink leotard. It is yeah. my fantasy to do that. Let's, let's not go there. Let's not give him any ideas. <laughs> Penguin says if multicam black isn't in the next Ghost Recon game, I'll riot. <laughs> oh, I'm sure it will be. I'm sure it will be. Open up to how real tier one units work. A mission can take you around the world. Yeah, true. 
but that's how Metal Gear Solid Five did it. You had a huge open map, but you flew in on a mission and flew out on the mission. And if you didn't want to, you can just run around. Yeah. You know, and a lot of people asked for that for Ghost Recon. We were asking for AI teammates to be able to drive vehicles, fly helicopters. It would be pretty freaking awesome if an AI teammate could fly you into the battlefield. You know, you do your mission and then they fly you out. You could kind of hover out while they still freaking fly somewhere. You know, that that was something the community was asking for. And it's it's cool, but you have to think about how much time it takes to program that type of stuff and if they wanted to give it to us and if they're even thinking, if that's even on their radar at this point with the failure of Breakpoint, you know, with them going first person, they're, they're obviously thinking to take this in a completely different direction and to appeal to a completely different audience of gamers. So we just have to wait and see what's up. Eagles is you. Uh, pick gloves. You guys should leave the Ghost Recon franchise for the division if you love third person that much. That's we shouldn't have Eagle. to switch games. Eagle, that we shouldn't have make to, sense. No, we shouldn't have to switch that. games. I don't understand that. Like, There's plenty of other first person games. Go that's, play those. That's that's, that's, that's like, like for instance wrong. with him. You want to play a first person tactical shooter? Go play Squad. Go play Insurgency. I wouldn't yeah. say Insurgency Sandstorm, but we we, we can say the same uh-uh. thing to you. Go play these other games. We want a third person it, Ghost Recon game. Look, I look at it like this. Does everybody everybody saw Avowed, right? The gameplay for Avowed. Does everybody oh. know what Avowed is? Yes. Where all right, so it's that it's new game uh coming out on Xbox and like a, you know it's like a, it's sci-fi like a fantasy medieval, game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, a fantasy game and you know, they show you swiping your it's first person. They show you swiping your sword across the screen. And it's just to to me it looks bad, right? Now if someone was like, "Oh my god, uh, you know, I I think if you want this, you should go play that." When it's like, "Yo, bro, I'll play Ghost of Tsushima." where I think Ghost of Tsushima is so, it set the bar so high for combat, and then look at Avowed and be like, damn, if this shit was in third person, I bet you the combat would be way better. And I don't think anybody should say, well, then go play Ghost of Tsushima for that much. Like, yo, dude, I just want the game to be as best as I think it would be for my type of play style. So everybody's going to have different opinions, but just like what he said, yo, if you don't like this one game, that doesn't mean you shouldn't, go play another like we're just voicing our opinions on what we think matters it's like yo it's like for arma how many people can tell you well if you want ghost recon to be that hardcore go play arma it's like nah bro i just don't want ghost recon to be a goofy looter shooter it's like bro that's understandable that's a really good point yeah i've i've seen multiple people i think even him and and him and jay if you want to play a good tactical shooter go play arma i don't i mean i I mean I, i don't Never mind. It shouldn't. It, oh, yeah, it, it shouldn't. It shouldn't have to be to the point where, where, where making people think that they they can't play a game or can't have a valid opinion on something like should Ghost Recon be first person? Should Ghost Recon be open world? Should it be more tactical? Should it be more milsim? Like I said, there are tons and tons of people who probably want Ghost Recon to be milsim, and then there are tons and tons of people who are going to tell you, no, go play Arma. No, go play this. And it's like, yo, it's 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 understandable to just want to have your preferences in gaming. Yeah. Points, I think the next game will be decent, even if it is first or third. I'm not I mean, arguing that. I'm not arguing I don't, that. I don't know, it, it could be for, it could be good in either perspective. But you, you why? Know, I don't know, bro. Why change it? Point, who knows? Why at that point is like. Like I said, you, you you can say that Ghost Recon Breakpoint, you can say that Ghost Recon Wildlands isn't a tactical shooter. You can say that it could be decent if it's first or third or whatever. But when you have your own niche, like the third, per- like Wildlands was highly successful. If you look at Ubisoft, how they looked at Wildlands and they looked at the numbers, it was a smash hit. And then they had two DLCs that were part of the season pass. And then they started introducing the special operations. So you had the special operations one, which was Splinter Cell. Then you had the Predator DLC. You had Special Operations 2, which was the Rainbow Six. You had Special Operations 3, which was Silent Spade with the Future Soldier crossover with Scott Mitchell. And then you had um, the one with Cole Walker that transitioned us into Breakpoint. Like There was a lot of content in that game because it was a highly successful game. But why do you need to change the perspective? Like, Why can't, based off of how good Wildlands was, why did you have to change the perspective 
Like I like I said, yeah. I don't know if that's some, yeah. some higher up person that's like like bro, it can still be that. good. The, the, the but... division is like what Prophet said, bro. The division is a completely different game, dude. Yeah. Like I don't like. Come on, man. You if they would the release division. a second mode in the division where it was a tactical shooter and not like a bullet spongy RPG. Yeah. Maybe dude, not even that. You can't crouch. You can't prone. Well, it's that's not true. like it's not the same. It, they're two different games. Ghost like the division is so far away from what Arma is. At least Ghost Recon is somewhere within the realm. Of being a a tax shooter close to a milsim, the division is just completely its own thing. It's it's a it's a looter shooter at its core, and that's what it is. And just because Ghost Recon's going first doesn't mean I'm not going to play it. Yo, bro, I'm looking forward to playing Gray Zone Warfare. That's a first person game. I I play first person games. I just don't enjoy them as much as third person games and i'm probably not going to enjoy ghost recon as a first person game as much as i would if it was a well-polished third person game that's all i'm saying yeah yo profi's going in on eagle it says whatever this dude's mission is he has the worst <laughs> so, takes i've ever seen yo the thing is i think eagle's playing a little devil's advocate to be honest eagle is a a, a third person ghost recon fan he like you know he likes arma he likes playing his games in third person i understand a little devil advocate here and there um he was exaggerating the point i get it um, i think the next game will be decent like while in his break point my point is if third person matters that much the division is a great third person game i know but like i said you can't take two different games and just because the perspective is like oh well go play this one go play that one it's like sometimes yo that first the first person or for first person the third person just doesn't hit as much or the yeah. games is just not not the same game. Yeah. Before I get too far in chat, I need to go back up to Deuce Pigeon with another ten dollar yes, yes, dono. Yes. Shout out Says, Deuce what, Pigeon. What was your thought on the Terminator season or basically the Terminator DLC for Ghost Recon Breakpoint and the gameplay and the mechanics? I mean, it kind of fit the theme Oops. with the the tech and all that other stuff on the island of Aroa, but it was just like the uh, the Predator DLC. It was something kind of cool, but then they took it back away from you. Yeah. Because well, of licensing reasons. So I'll be honest, I 100% enjoyed the Terminator season because it was like, you knew what it was. I can have a Ghost Recon game and get something like Predator or Terminator and have fun with it because it was kind of a theme outside of what Ghost Recon should be. And they made it because the whole robot shit on the island. So like it is, it was what it was. I had fun streams where I took a, a hostage and ran her across the map. And pretend I was protecting Santa, Sarah Connor while the freaking Terminators were hunting me. That shit was super fun. I enjoyed it for what it was, the little Easter egg gimmick that it was. It does suck that they took it away. I do think moving forward, if developers like Ubisoft are going to have things like this, they should kind of have backup plans. For instance, you kind of, what we got, another one? How do Davis you hit more than, more than one thumbs up? I don't know. I don't know what he's... Anyway, long story short, I think developers should be able to replace assets and things so that they could keep the content in there and just remove the things that are licensed. That was my point. Yeah. There was a lot of people that were really sad when they took the Predator DLC out. Yeah, it was fun. You know, like, yo, remove the music, change the Predator skin, like little tweaks here and there. And then, you know, keep it. Just keep it there. Yeah. The I Predator DLC, I think, difficult. was... it was. I didn't really play a lot of the Terminator DLC, so I don't know. But the Predator yeah, the DLC was, was extremely well done, I thought. Yeah. The way they took a lot of lines from the movie and had Nomad say it throughout, and when you're tracking yeah. it and stuff, yeah, it was, it was good. Yeah. So... Uh, Blue Captain says, Love Wildlands in third person with the open world. I'm worried about Ubisoft is going to monetize... Ghost Recon is the first person after what they try to do with breakpoint guns, attachments, they have a boost and stuff. Yeah, it'll be interesting because then you can basically go down the path of Call of Duty. What Call of Duty does with their first person like weapon packs and stuff. I hope they don't go that route, but they're probably well, you know, they're probably well. Who knows? Yeah, who knows? Uh yeah, Eagle. Squad based mechanics are important. What are you gonna say? Yeah. I mean, I don't I think that's kind of about where we probably could just wrap it up. If there was any other you know, any questions in chat that you guys kind of want us to answer. And then I think it'd yeah. be a good kind of time to wrap it up because the 90% of this was just shitting on first person. No, not shitting no. on it, but it's, I mean, it's a, it's a big deal. Look, it the is, franchise, it's huge. 
Look, I, I'm gonna here's here, I'm gonna argue right now, actively argue with people who are like, but this is how the game was originally. No, okay, the game was originally crosshairs on a screen. It was never actually the first person games that we see today. All right, it was a freaking crosshair on a screen, and that's all you got. Then the then they had a game for the the that came out on PC that gave you an actual first person game while they were developing for console to be a third person game for the duration of the series. We're talking about what? One, two, uh, Advanced Warfighters, a Phantoms game, uh, a Future Soldier game, a Wildlands game, and a Breakpoint game. Did I miss anything else? That's six titles compared to the first one that had uh, crosshairs and had a DLC. Yeah, it's, and then it's, like, even, it's even more than that, too, when you figure all the DLCs for Ghost Recon 2. Yeah, and all that so, stuff like there's it was more third person than first. You know, so the first person they had crosshairs in the beginning, then they had the 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 same development for Advanced Warfighter where PC version was a little different, and then they just they ran with third person because third person was the bread and butter of what they were going with. And yo, I was down with it. I thought Socom back in 02 whenever it came I think it was 02. Dude, I thought SOCOM was 10 times better than what Ghost Recon 1 was. That's my opinion. I played Ghost Recon 1 in college a little bit. Uh, my roommate had it. He would play that. He would play Diablo 2. I remember those were his, that, that, those were like the games he loved to play. I played a little on his computer back then. I wasn't a big fan. I thought SOCOM was a better game. Now, whether SOCOM was a better game because the, the mechanics, the third-person view, the way it worked, you could actually zoom in. And and have a little crosser on the screen and, and then zoom out and have third person. Like, yo, I thought SOCOM did it way better. And yeah. then when Ghost Recon took off with Advanced Warfighter and all, dude, it took off as a third person game. So 20 yeah. years later, if you're going to sit here and be like, well, the first game was first person. Like, yo, bro, do you want to play a game with a crosser on the screen? No. So like, miss me with that. Dude. Yeah. And I feel like here's another take too that I don't, I mean, I'm not trying to go against everything that you're saying. No, homage, it kind of agreed. seems that way. Uh, Eagle says, and the correlation is that the earlier games had better squad mechanics, which made them better games. That didn't have any correlation to it being first person, though. First person had no effect on squad mechanics. You had some really cool squad controls in the first game of being able to command your troops, and if your troops died, they were gone. Yeah, especially with attack map. Yeah, with attack map and be able to command your troops and stuff like that, that was a whole other aspect, but that didn't have anything to do with the fact that it was first person. So that's that's not a correlation. Yo, homage. First of all, what's up, right? Second of all, I think you're right. Third person just worked for the type of game Ghost Recon is. I think it. I agree. I agree. Having this situational awareness of a third person game, giving you the ability to move your teammates, move in stealth, move like yo, it works well for what Ghost Recon was and has been for all these years. So, I mean, you know, and it is what it is. We're, we're going to see now uh, moving into 2024, 2025, 2020, you know, like they're going to start dropping things and we're going to get more info, actual info from the developers and we'll see what we get. And at the end of the day, a squad and myself will have to, you know, bite the bullet and play ghost recon and the rest of you and play ghost recon as a first person game and we'll see eagle you too you're gonna have to play it as a first person game and we'll see how it is yeah the second thing he said there too with that he says you know i wish socom would make a comeback with cross play like if you did pc mm. and playstation now would of any time would be a great time to release it as a third person tactical shooter now, now shout, they, shout out to socom john bro socom yeah, john dude. They would have the third-person tactical shooter genre to themselves now if they were to release a SOCOM game. So, Yo, there's really no third-person tactical shooters now. Once this game comes out, that genre is dead. Yeah. It's crazy, dude. Ghost but Recon was literally the only third-person tactical shooter on the market, bro. For I mean, as far as like a broader audience, because you can play Arma in third, but that's just PC. So. Right. And you can say, and you can uh, you can argue the division, but the division is not a tactical shooter. Yeah. It is a third person RPG. Yeah, it's a looter shooter. So yeah, it's a looter shooter. It's not a tactical shooter. So yeah, yeah. After this game comes out, 
you're right. The third person tactical shooter genre is dead. Dead. Yeah. Oh God, that hurts to say that. Yeah. I kind of wish if the division just had like a crouch and a prone and, and just, you know, they just tweak their mechanics a bit. I think it could be a, a way better game than what it is. I, I never understood why they didn't have crouch and prone in that game. Yeah. Yeah. The only crouch you had is when you stuck to cover. Yeah. That was yeah. small cover. So Call of Duty is just modern Fortnite. Ghost Recon needs to be nothing like that. Tactical realism shooter, yes, but have both uh, uh, perspectives forever. Yo, Dave, what up, brother? Yeah, man, I agree. I mean, to each their own, but we could sit here and talk about this all night, but, like, I, I, why would why would it have hurt to have both? Then you appeal to everybody. Well, what is the one thing that the developer from Grey Zone said? A game for everyone is a game for no one. No, Something no, like that, that. Was, that was the Helldivers CEO. The Helldivers, yeah, that's what it was. Yeah, Hell yeah a game for everyone is a game for no one. So, yeah, we'll see. We'll see what's up. I'd, I'd like to see when Ghost Recon finally does come out and we're playing it, I'd like to see if it's going to have the longevity that they probably want. And that, at least for me, the longevity it's going to have with replayability and the ability to play it over and over and over again, you know? I don't know if I'm going to be able to do that with a uh, first person game like that. I don't know if I'm going to get bored, if I'm going to look yeah. somewhere else. It all depends on yes, what they allow you to rock, do in the yes. game. Yo, Buck, you're welcome, brother. Thanks for stopping by. Is there by another Metal out. Gear game confirmed? Delta. They're remaking three. That's true. So That's true. I can't wait to see that. Can't yeah. wait to see what that looks like. Early days, though, bud. Nothing is confirmed yet. We'll see what the devs come up with. I'm sure the majority of the community will enjoy it. Eagle, I see. I yo, I disagree. I think that the majority of the community now is going to be upset that it goes to first person. I think the majority of Drewski and those types of guys community will possibly enjoy it for a, a run or two, as long as it can keep up with games like Tarkov and um, Gray Zone when Gray Zone launches. Because you got to remember too, like. Yo, the big fry guys, the Drewski guys, I think a lot of those guys are PC gamers. I could be wrong. I'm sure yeah, a lot of console are. guys follow him, but he'll cover things like Stalker and all these types Arma and all these types of games. Those games are PC exclusive, right? Stalker's not on console. Not is yet. It? Stalker 2 not is going to release on Xbox. But there you go. Yo, Deus Pigeon. Yo, chat. Slam the thumbs up button. Hit that like button. Let people know you enjoyed your time here during the tactical roundtable. And uh, I guess, yeah, what do you, anything else you want to cover, bro? I don't think so. I mean, yeah. to be honest, like, Eagle, you do have a point. I mean, it could possibly be third person too. Nothing is, nothing is confirmed. Right. But as, as reputable as Tom Henderson is, we know that it's at least first person. Yeah. 100%. There is at least a confirmed first person. Does that mean that between now and release, they don't see community feedback or maybe pivot a little bit and add a third person perspective? It's possible. I hope yeah. they do, because, like, you know, then you would really capture everyone. But I don't know how that would work if you're going for specific gameplay mechanics. Like, if you're going for specific mechanics that work really well in first person, they won't work quite as well in third person. But then, likewise, if you have third person and you don't have a cover system at all, because you kind of started with first person. So, I don't know. Who knows? It's super early. It's super early. This was a leak. This is not confirmed by Ghost Recon or Ubisoft. When they're ready to show it, when they're ready to confirm that it's real, we get some Look, details. Here's the thing, though. He didn't say that Ghost Recon will be adding a first-person perspective. He said, we will see the Ghost Recon franchise head back into a first-person perspective. That's what he said. So that's the information he gathered and has put out for us to 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 get yeah. so you know take that as you will you know and yeah. that's that yep all right we are a minute and 53 minute and 53 we're an hour and 53 minutes in i think it is a good uh <laughs> you gotta go to bed <laughs> it is a good a good place to wrap it up i do have some stuff to take care of tomorrow and i am a little bit under the weather but this was fun eagle yeah, super like fun. no just no no shade no disrespect or anything like that i understand your opinion 100 percent. i don't agree with the grand theft auto wildlands thing that's what triggered me the most but to eagle, each I their own love you 
To each their own. Yeah. No disrespect. No, no, no beef or nothing. Like, I hope the game is good. Does it have to be, you know, third person to be good? From obviously, they don't think it has to. Otherwise, they wouldn't have done it. So, I we'll hope see. it's good. We'll I hope they can figure out a way to make it longevity. You know, I have a lot of replay value, stuff like that. I hope it succeeds because if it doesn't, it might be the end of Ghost Recon. So, Breakpoint didn't sell well. If this one doesn't do well, it might be it. We might yeah. never get another Ghost Recon game ever again. So, I hope it does well. So, with that being said, that is where I'm going to wrap up the stream, guys. I really appreciate everybody from tuning in. Um, we will do another one of these probably when we get some more information from Tom Henderson because I feel like we get more. <laughs> the next information we get is probably going to be from him and not the devs unless, you know, it's been radio silent since February of 2022, basically, on the franchise itself. So we're two years of radio silence. So they have obviously are working on something. So, but until then, if there's any new information, breaking news or whatever, uh, you'll see it on my channel. You'll see it on G's channel. Um, maybe we'll play a division playthrough or something on here as a live stream. Maybe we'll finish up the ghost mode that we still have yet to finish. Yeah, yeah I, I definitely have to kill Sueño, at least on ghost mode, uh, you know, for me to be satisfied enough to move on. Uh, I have moved on to Hell Divers for a bit, but I definitely got it. We got to get some more ghost mode kind of wrap that up and then i think a division two playthrough yo in hardcore mode will be fun There's a, is there a hardcore mode yeah so like if your character dies you're dead dead yeah oh man so we're gonna play ghost mode on the division yes <laughs> yes you know in a, in a rpg looter shooter we're gonna play ghost mode i'm down <laughs> yeah. that's something that we could do yeah uh but yeah, I think, I mean, we could go on and on. We could stream for four hours and answer everybody's questions. But uh, yeah, red mono for democracy. For, for democracy. democracy. But all right, guys, appreciate everybody tuning in. Hopefully we'll see you guys again very, very soon with either a live stream or another tech round table. So appreciate everybody tuning in. Thanks, yep, guys. Later, guys. Love you all. Salute for democracy. Go out there, spread democracy. Later, guys.